What's up, yo? I just came over to pick up the rest of the food that was harvested yesterday. And uh, I'm headed back. Uh-oh. Look at the state of the road. Because of the rain, I mean, the road is really bad. There are trees falling in the middle of the road, and there's like nobody to clear them. Unless I like bring my own chainsaw. Now, some people do it, but uh, most people don't. Like here, this tree fell in the middle of the road. There's another one right there. Fell in the middle of the road. So now you gotta fall. And you pass through here. No vehicle can pass through here, though. Somebody needs to uh, bring their own chainsaw to clear that up the road. So those are the challenges of you know, um, doing something in the forest, you know, um, getting land in the forest. The government don't come here. Like we are on our own. Like it's got to be like a community where everybody has to chip in. And um, for the most part, most people don't, they don't care to chip in, right? It's like, if you are in need of something, if you are stuck, uh, you're gonna do whatever it takes to get your stuff out. And uh, most likely, you are going to spend the money to clear out the road. See, there is another tree that fell in the middle of, of the road. Uh, that's because of the rainy season. Because sometimes it's windy, you know, and these trees, old trees or weak trees, do fall. See that big branch up there? Like, I gotta go there quick. Like, I, I'll buy. Like, because that thing could fall anytime. So, you always got to be on the lookout. And uh, mind you, I'm like the only one around this area right now. And it's like 4 or 5 p.m., something like that. So, if anything was to happen to me, you know, I'm on my own. I'll probably be dead if something was to happen. But, you know, I survived America. And uh, Africa, I wouldn't mind dying in Africa. You know, I'm not saying I'm gonna die, but I'm saying like I wouldn't mind me dying in Africa. But uh, yeah, like fear, uh, something, from the past, like fear is no longer in my vocabulary. You know, literally, like I'm telling you, like I'm the only one in this area. Probably, probably like let's say four miles radius. I'm the only one in the four miles radius. So if something was to happen to me, 
I will just be hoping that someone will go past this way and uh, lend me some hand, lend me some help. But the bike is good. Uh, I got a new engine in there, so. Yeah, the engine sounds really good and I, and then and the power and everything I could feel you know, I'm happy like I'm very satisfied with the work that was done to it the only thing I hate like I said I hate people asking me about America they don't ask me about America because they want to know America they asking me about America because they want to go to America and they think I have the keys to America. Yeah, I'm black. And good luck with me trying to get you to America. You know? And I'm like, yo, the US Embassy is right, you know, it's like a it's like three, four hours away from here. Why don't you go there? I don't know why black people always want that shortcut. Yo, you don't, in our community, people don't want to go all the way. People always want to like cheat. Not, not really cheat, but people just want that shortcut. There's a saying like, if it he, if he lasts more than five minutes, a black man is not interested. Like, if something, if a task, if a, a goal, if something, if it lasts more than five minutes, we are not interested. We, lo we love our things to be short, precise, and done. We don't like, we don't do long term. We don't plan ahead. Like, we don't, we don't have the patience. So, the guy over here always asking me about America. All they're doing is looking for shortcuts. That's all. Looking for shortcuts. They know if they really want, like, they know if they want to go to America. You know, that's a diplomatic home or whatever. U.S. Embassy, Consulate, they know they get all the answer that they are looking for. But since they know that's going to be tough and that's going to be, that's going to take some time, they think like I'm an easy target. Like they think like I'm a, I got some, uh, I know how to smoke with people or something. You know, they always come like, they come at me thinking that I have, I know how to smoke with people into America. I'm like, yeah. I can't even smuggle myself into America. Yo, I own money. I owe money to uh, the US government, the student loan. I can't even smuggle myself. I would smuggle myself into America and work and not pay nothing on student loan, but I can't do that. I can't invade these people. And you think I'm gonna pick you up from Africa and smuggle you into America? when I can't even smuggle my own self into America and invade the student loans and the, uh, the property taxes on my vehicle. I can't ev even evade them. But you think I'm gonna, like I got some, but that's the thing though, that's the thing that I'm saying. Like we love shortcuts, I don't know why. I don't know why we love shortcuts, but that's something we need to change. Like we gotta, we have to really put in work. We need to stop always wanting people to do our work. And when you tell them, yo, all right, I'm ready, but you're gonna have to pay me. Now they're not interested anymore. And sometimes I feel like people in our community just love to waste your time. And the best way 
you know, to get them off you is to charge them. Once you start charging them, they leave you alone. Once you tell them, I, I'll give you all the information you need, but you're gonna have to pay me. Oh, when you, it's, the minute you say that, they will leave you alone. But I'm not like that, you know. I hate telling, charging people for, you know, simple information. You know, when they ask me about America, the, if I'm in the mood, I tell them. But when I'm busy doing work, when I'm busy trying to get something done, I'm on my cell phone, and you are here asking me some dumb questions about dumb things that are irrelevant to me, you know, I get frustrated. And maybe if I tell them, yo, everything you want to know about America, I'll tell you. But I need to get paid. Oh, this is the rainy season. The rainy season does all this. <laughs> when I said in the four miles radius that I was the only human being around here, I think it's more like five or six miles radius. Like I'm the only one. If, if somebody had bad intent, you know, they could really hurt me out here. But thank God we are in Africa and people are people aren't like that. So thank God for that. Oh look at that small snake. Oh uh, you couldn't see it on my on my camera. I saw it. Small snake. He was crossing the road. I don't know if the camera picked it up. But we'll see when I upload it. I'll see if I could uh if, this, if, if that snake could be spotted in there. Man, if, if I see it on the camera, I'll put an arrow to it so y'all can see it too. So, fingers are crossed. Hopefully I'll be able to see. If I see it on the camera, like if I see it on the camera, when I do edit the video, I will uh, put a pointer so y'all will see it too. But uh, it was a small snake. It was. I want to see a big one, like cross the street, so uh, y'all can uh, experience that too. And I see the, I see them here a lot. When they hear the bike, like, uh, I mean, they are afraid of us, and we are afraid of them. You know, they run from us, we run from them. And I think it's a good relationship. That way nobody gets hurt. And I respect that. Scared of us, we're scared of them. They run their way, we run ours. And everybody gets to, to leave. So yeah, I'm thinking uh, maybe Next time somebody tell me about, or next time somebody asks me about America, I'll just tell them straight up, like, I, I'm gonna charge you, and I got a consulting firm uh, that that's based on, you know, everything USA, but you're gonna have to, I'm gonna to have to charge you. I, I think if I do that, these people are going to leave me alone so I could focus in my life. Because like I told you, my life is not, you know, I'm not stable yet. My boat is still rocking, you know. My boat is rocking. You know? I need some good, good residual income you know the most y'all could do for me I mean I mean the most y'all could do is help me raise all the funds that I that I want to so that uh, you know I could stabilize my boat and by me doing so I will be able to you know help somebody too in the future you know my boat needs to be uh, stabilized 
you know the least the most you can do is donate to my GoFundMe and stuff like that that's the most you can do you know donate a dollar two dollars ten dollars five dollars twenty dollars hundred dollars whatever that's the most you can do now the list uh oh back in the water we're good now all right let me go past here all right so yo, i'm just chilling like i'm like the last man on earth that's how i feel i feel like the last man on earth here i am nobody's here Yo, I could be talking to snakes, all kinds of monkeys, I could be talking to them and nobody would ever know. And nobody, nobody be here to witness. Nobody would know anything. So this is the road during rainy season. Like it hasn't gotten like really, really bad. It gets bad, trust me. Um, this place gets so bad, it's almost, it's damn near impossible to navigate. But this is rainy season, here is a, 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 an artificial, not an artificial lake. Yo, not an artificial lake. Alright, that's one, that's one brother. So... I'm not the only one now in this area. I'm not the only one. I just, I, was, I just saw somebody. Well, I'm telling you, some, some, uh, they got females that come and live on, uh, in cabins. They have tents, and I'm telling you, these females they get pregnant every year, every year, cause. It's, it's not a lot of entertainment out here. It's work, sex, work, sex, work, sex. So whenever you see a female that's out here, yo, know, she only got two jobs. Not actually three. 